Ad Astra Episca. Welcome to the Genshin Impact in D&D Traveler. I'm Talon Striker, and I'm here to guide you on this commission. Today we'll be talking about the Divine Priestess of Watasumi Island, Kokomi. But before we continue, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button to be notified when a new video comes out. Kokomi, why don't you introduce yourself? I am Sangonomiya Kokomi, the Divine Priestess of Watatsumi Island. My journey with you will be an opportunity to unwind. Uh, <coughs> I mean, to survey beyond our borders. Don't worry, I have left behind ample directives in my absence and have also completed the island's projected development plans. Departing for a brief period will be of little consequence. Well, without further ado then, I bring you all Kokomi in D&D. The goal for this build are as follows. Kokomi needs to heal herself and her allies in battle with ease. She also needs to be comfortable on land and water. And finally, Kokomi has to be able to summon the wrath of her god, or Abashi, and the ocean on her enemies. To survive hardship, you must prepare for hardship. For Kokomi's race, she'll be a Triton. The Divine Priestess is said to inherit the blood of Orabashi and come from the lost land of Enkonomiya. With this, Kokomi will get a plus one in strength, constitution, and thanks to Tasha's wisdom. Being a Triton gives her a swim speed of 30 feet and the ability to breathe water. She also gets dark vision up to 60 feet. Kokomi can also communicate simple ideas with beasts that can breathe water, but she has no unique ability to understand them in return. She also has resistance to cold damage and can speak primordial. Kokomi also gets the spells Fog Cloud at the start, Gust of Wind at level 3, and Wall of Water at level 5. Fog Cloud lets Kokomi create a 20 foot radius sphere of fog. Gust the Wind creates a line of strong wind that blasts from Kokomi in a direction she chooses. Each creature in the line must make a save or be pushed back, and it takes extra movement to move in said line. Wall of Water creates a wall up to 30 feet long, 10 feet high, and 1 foot thick, or a ringed wall up to 20 feet in diameter, 20 feet high, and 1 foot thick made out of water. Legend has it that our ancestors lived in a palace in the depths of the ocean, and that the god, Orobashi, brought us to the surface. I've often wondered, wouldn't a palace like that be too dark? Every time I think about it, I start to really appreciate the light. For stats, we'll be doing standard array. Kokomi's strength is a 12 because she gets her daily swim in. Dexterity is a 10, not the best, but not the worst. Constitution is a 13 because she can take a hit with no issues. Intelligence is a 14 because she's known for being big brain. Wisdom is a 15 because she has both knowledge and the know-how to execute any stratagem. And Charisma is an 8 because she's not the best at social interactions. After becoming the Divine Priestess, I gradually grew accustomed to this life. At the very least, I have the power to change something when it doesn't sit well with me. Well, more importantly, this title allowed me to meet you, did it not? Kokomi grew up as the Divine Priestess, so her background will be an acolyte. She gets proficiency in insight and religion. She also learns two languages being celestial and deep speech. She can speak to the gods up above and to the deepest parts of the ocean. A long time ago, I had no intention of becoming the Divine Priestess. My only goal was to study military strategy and become an advisor. That way, I could remain behind the scenes and lessen my overall burden. Oh, fate had other ideas in store. You can't defy that which flows in your veins. Kokomi's personal characteristics are as follows. Her personality traits are, I can find common ground between the fiercest enemies, empathize with them, and always work towards peace. I've spent so long in the temple that I have little practical experience dealing with people in the outside world though. Ideals are, I trust that my deity will guide my actions. I have faith that if I work hard, things will go well. Bonds being, everything I do is for the people of my island. And her flaw is social interactions drain my energy, and at a certain point, I want nothing more than to be left alone. No matter how pressing the situation may become, I must remain composed. If I let the stress get to me, then what can I expect from others around me? 
Starting out, Kokomi will be a cleric. At level 1, she gets proficiency in history and persuasion. Kokomi is well read on the art of war and is good at commanding an army. She also gets her subclass, in this case, Life Domain. This domain gives her proficiency in heavy armor, certain spells every few levels, and the Disciple of Life ability. This ability allows Kokomi to add extra healing whenever she heals. Kokomi also gets spells. Here she'll pick up Cantrip, Sacred Flame, Spare the Dying, and Word of Radiance. Sacred Flame forces a target to dodge or taste the Wrath of God. Spare the Dying allows her to stabilize a dying creature. And Word of Radiance erupts damage from Kokomi, damaging those around her. She also gets level 1 spells. Here, Domain spells are bless and cure wounds but she also picks up create or destroy water detect magic healing word and shield of faith bless gives three allies extra help in attacking enemies or avoiding danger cure wounds lets kokomi heal a creature for a decent chunk of hp create or destroy water as it sounds allows her to do just that with up to 10 gallons of worth of water detect magic lets her see anything magical in range so basically elemental sight healing word lets kokomi shout out a word of encouragement to heal someone for a little bit and shield of faith surrounds someone buffing their defense at level 2 Claire, Kokomi gets her channel Divinity and she can use it once a day. With this she can do one of three things, turn undead, preserve life, or harness divine power. Turn undead lets Kokomi present her holy symbol and have undead creatures run from her. Preserve life gives her a pool of hit points that she can give to anyone that is below their half max HP. And harness divine power lets Kokomi regain a spell slot equal to the proficiency bonus rounded up. At level 3 cleric, Kokomi gets level 2 spells. Her domain gives her less restoration and spiritual weapon. She also picks up the spells Calm Emotion and Prayer of Healing. Lesser Restoration cures one type of disease or condition. Spiritual Weapon lets Kokomi summon a spectral jellyfish that helps attack enemies. Calm Emotions can attempt to suppress strong emotions in a group of people. And Prayer of Healing lets her heal a group of creatures for a chunk of HP. At level 4 cleric, Kokomi gets the Warcaster feat, which means that she's practiced casting spells in the midst of battle, learning techniques that she can use on her spells during combat. She also gets the Cantrip Thaumaturgy and the second level spell, Fine Traps. With Thaumaturgy, Kokomi manifests a minor wonder within range. And with Fine Traps, Kokomi can sense the presence of any trap within range that's within line of sight. It's a pretty good spell for master tacticians so that their troops don't fall for simple traps. After that, we can jump over to Druid. At level 1 Druid, Kokomi gets the Druidic language. She also picks up two cantrips being Frostbite and Shape Water. And she picks up the first level spells Absorb Elements, Beast Bond, Good Berry, and Ice Knife. Frostbite lets Kokomi cause numbing frost to form on a creature, and Shape Water, as a sound, lets her choose an area of water within a cube and manipulate it in different ways. Absorb Elements captures some of incoming energy lessening the effects that it would have on kokomi and applying said element on her next attack beast bond lets her establish a telepathic link with a one beast that she can touch and that is friendly to her and then be able to sense through its senses good berry lets kokomi make 10 berries that are infused with magic that can heal Ice Knife lets her create a shard of ice fling it at a creature and upon impact it explodes dealing damage to things around it Brute force is not my modus operandi, but becoming stronger isn't a bad thing. At level 2 Druid, Kokomi gets her Druid subclass being Circle of Stars as well as gaining Wild Companion and Wild Shape. Wild Companion gives Kokomi the ability to summon a spirit that assumes an animal form that stays around for a few hours. Wild Shape allows her to magically assume the shape of a beast that she's seen before, twice a rest. Her subclass, Circle of Stars, allows her to get a star map that when holding gives her the Guidance Cantrip and Guiding Bolt spell. Guidance gives her or an ally some help in a task and Guiding Bolt lets her shoot a beam of radiant energy that can hurt a target and make it easier for an ally to hit that target. Starry Form allows Kokomi to turn into a constellation rather than a beast and has three forms to choose from. This is her elemental skill. Archer lets Kokomi make a ranged spell attack as a bonus action, Chalice lets her heal herself or another creature that she can see, and Dragon lets her treat 
anything less than a 9 on a roll as a 10 for intelligence or wisdom checks or constitution saves. At level 3, Druid Kokomi gets level 2 spells. Here she'll pick up Healing Spirit and Summon Beast. Healing Spirit lets Kokomi call forth a Nature Spirit to soothe the wounded, so that way whenever someone moves into it for the first time, the spirit can heal that creature. This is basically her elemental skill. Summon Beast lets her call forth a spirit that can help her in combat. At level 4 Druid, Kokomi gets an ability score increase, and here she'll increase her wisdom by 2. She also gets Wild Shape Improvement, which lets her turn into stronger beasts. She also gets another cantrip being Poison Spray and Pass Without Trace as a second level spell. Poison Spray lets Kokomi project a puff of noxious gas at an enemy, and Pass Without Trace lets her summon a veil of shadows in silence that radiates from her, masking herself and her companions from detection. Perfect for sneaky infiltration missions like into, I don't know, the Shogun's capital? At level 5 Druid, Kokomi gets access to third level spells. Here she'll pick up R of Vitality and Tidal Wave. Aura of Vitality has healing energy radiate from her and lets her use a bonus action to heal a creature. With Tidal Wave, she can construct a wave of water that crashes down on an area within range, and each creature in that area must make a save or take damage and be knocked prone. At level 6 Druid, Kokomi gets Cosmic Omen. Whenever she finishes a long rest, she can consult her star map and find out if she can help her allies in whatever they're doing or harm her allies with whatever they're doing. These can be for attacks, saving throws, or ability checks. And she'll pick up the spell Summon Fey, which lets her call forth a Fey Spirit that helps in battle. I'm just bubbling with energy. We'll make a formidable force in our next fight. At level 7 Druid, Kokomi gets access to level 4 spells. Here she'll pick up the spell Conjure Minor Elementals. This spell lets her summon a number of elementals, depending on how strong they are, that assist in combat on their own. Level 8 Druid gives Kokomi an ability score increase. Here she'll take a plus 2 to Wisdom. She'll also get another Wild Shape improvement, which lets her turn into even deadlier beasts. She also gets the spells Control Water and Hallucinatory Terrain. Control Water lets her control any freestanding water inside a cube up to 100 feet. She can choose to make a Flood, part water, redirect flowing water, or cause a whirlpool. Hallucinatory Terrain lets Kokomi make a natural terrain in 100 and 50 cube in range look, sound, and smell like another form of natural terrain. If you don't have the home field advantage, just make it. At level 9 Druid, Kokomi gets level 5 spells. Here she'll pick up Conjure Elemental. With this she can call forth an elemental servant that helps in combat. At level 10 Druid, Kokomi gets Twinkling Constellations. This improves her starry form. Her archer and chalice now do more damage and heal more, while her dragon form gives her a flying speed and can hover. Moreover, at the start of each of her turns, she can change which form she wants. She also gets another cantrip being Primal Savagery, and another 5th level spell being Maelstrom. Primal Savagery lets her channel primal magic to cause her teeth and fingernails to sharpen, ready to deliver a corrosive attack. Maelstrom makes a swirling mass of water appear on the ground or in a body of water. A creature inside must make a save or take damage and be pulled towards the center. Now that we're done with Druid, Kokomi goes back to Cleric. At level 5 Cleric, Kokomi gets destroyed and dead. Whenever she uses Turn Undead, a weak undead creature is destroyed instead. Kokomi also gets level 3 Cleric spells. Her domain gives her Beacon of Hope and Revivify. Beacon of Hope lets her choose any number of creatures within range and they get advantage on Wisdom and Death saves and heal the max possible from any healing. Revivify lets Kokomi bring back a creature who has died within the last minute. She also picks up the spells Mass Healing Word, Spirit Guardians, and Water Walk. Mass Healing Word lets Kokomi call out Words of Restoration that heals up to 6 creatures for some HP. Spirit Guardian lets her call forth spirits to protect her and look like fish. Any creature that enters the area near her has less speed and takes damage. Water Walk gives the ability to move across any liquid surface such as water, acid, mud, snow, quicksand, or lava as if it was harmless solid ground for up to 10 creatures. The moon shines bright over the depths of the seas as the tides come and go. It seems that as I go from strength to strength, so does my state of mind flow. At level 6 Cleric, Kokomi gets Blessed Healer. Whenever she heals someone besides herself, Kokomi heals 2 plus the spell level. 
At level 7 cleric, Kokumi gets 4th level cleric spells. Her domain gives her Death Ward and Guardian of Faith. Death Ward lets Kokumi touch a creature and grant it a measure of protection from death. The first time the creature would drop to 0, it instead drops to 1 HP. Guardian of Faith lets her summon a large spectral guardian that hovers in a space of her choice and any hostile creature that moves close to it must make a save or take damage. She also picks up the spells Aura of Life and Divination. Aura of Life has a life preserving energy radiant from Kokomi, giving each non-hostile creature in the area resistance to necrotic damage, their hit points max can't be reduced, and getting 1 HP if they drop to 0. Divination lets Kokomi ask a single question concerning a specific goal, event, or activity to occur within the next seven days. The reply might be a short phrase, a cryptic rhyme, or an omen, but it is truthful. At level 8 cleric, Kokomi gets an ability score increase, which will increase her constitution by 2, and she gets blessed strikes. Blessed strikes makes it so that way when a creature takes damage from one of Kokomi's cantrips or weapon attacks, they deal an extra radiant damage. At level 9 cleric, Kokomi gets access to level 5 cleric spells. Her domain gives her mass cure wounds and raised dead. Mass cure wounds lets out a wave of healing energy that washes out from a point of her choice within range and six creatures regain a chunk of HP. Raised dead lets her return a dead creature she touches to life, provided that it has been dead no longer than 10 days. Kokomi also picks up the spells Commune and Legend Lore. Commune lets her contact her deity and ask up to three questions that can be answered with a yes or no. She receives a correct answer for each question, but divine beings aren't necessarily omniscient, so she might receive an unclear as an answer if a question pertains to information that lies behind the deity's knowledge. Legend lore lets Kokomi name or describe a person, place, or object. The spell brings to mind a brief summary of the significant lore about the thing she named. The lore might consist of current tales, forgotten stories, or even a secret lore that has never been widely known. Finally, a level 10 cleric, Kokomi's final level, she gets divine intervention. This lets Kokomi call on her deity to intervene on her behalf whenever her need is great. She describes the assistance she seeks, rolls a percentile die, and if it succeeds, she can't use this feature again for 7 days, but if it fails, she can try again the next day. Kokomi also gets another cantrip being Told the Dead. Told the Dead lets her choose a creature and the sound of a bell fills the air around it for a moment. If the creature fails the save, it takes damage. Kokomi also picks up the spell Summon Celestial. She calls forth the Celestial Spirit to help out in battle. I often used to succumb to self-doubt. I would think to myself, can a person like me really hold the title of Divine Priestess? Now, the thought hardly crosses my mind. When I'm with you, I seem to be able to cut straight through most problems. With this, the Divine Priestess of Watasumi Island, Kokumi, is finished. If someone messes with Kokumi, or those she cares about, they will feel the might of Orobashi and the ocean. But now comes the pros and the cons for the build. Pros are that Kokomi is a tanky with over 150 HP and a base armor class of 18. She also has a school of different types of fish that can help her in battle and has a variety of healing spells and ways to heal more than normal. Cons are that Kokomi doesn't have the best saving throws. Her highest is 11 in wisdom, but the next highest is 5 in constitution, and the others vary from 3 to 0. She also has a lot of concentration spells, so she has to pick the right spell to use and try not to drop it. Kokomi is also a multi-class, so she doesn't get some of the better high level spells or class abilities that you would normally. Well, with how much healing she can do and her tactical prowess, she shouldn't have a problem winning both the battle and the war. But don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit the bell button to finish today's commission. And I'll see you all next time when we talk about the head chef of the Wanamin restaurant.